What's your purpose for going down to the park in the first place? Um, so as I just, uh, you know, just touched upon just a couple of minutes ago, um, I went through a certain spot of illness and um, I had 18 inches of my intestine removed basically in hospital. Uh, within that ordeal, within 12 days of the, of the two and a half, three weeks, that, I think it was three weeks actually that I was in hospital, I'd lost 17 or 18 kilograms in weight. I was very, very slim. I was slimmer than you, yourself, Leon. Mad. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I'm back up to my strength, alhamdulillah, but I will tell you this, look. Um, the situation that I went through opened my eyes in many, many different ways. You know, I had, at the time, my mother, uh, my father, sorry, he was uh, quite ill. May Allah bless him and protect him. He's all right now, alhamdulillah, but at the time he was quite ill. And my mother doesn't drive and she was coming to the hospital from, you know, early hours in the morning to, uh, and she wouldn't leave until, until after I'd fallen asleep. Um, she would come on the bus on herself and she, she, you know, she's, she's a woman just about to hit 60. And she was doing this every single day that I was in hospital from the minute that I got there to the minute I left. You know, she was my rock, man, under Allah. And it just made me, obviously when you're in hospital, if you're in prison or you're in hospital, or you're just in a, in a solitary situation and you, you naturally or you're pushed to isolate yourself from, from the world and everything around you, things do hit you, you know, things do hit you. And um, for me, it was seeing the mercy that was coming from my mother. I thought to myself, how merciful is God? What is God trying to show me here? I grew up with, uh, I mean, I, I woke up after a couple surgeries with part of my intestines on the outside of my stomach and I had a bag on top of it. And this is how I was going to the toilet for the next eight months of my life. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine now, everything's been reversed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَإِنَّمَا عَلْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا عَلْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Verily after hardship comes ease, or verily with hardship comes ease, or verily ease comes after hardship. Now, and Allah repeats himself as well, yeah? For me, it was a blessing in disguise, you know, it kept me away from so much, but it was a time for me to... Um, reconcile with myself, with my own soul. And see, obviously seeing your mother in that sort of situation, the woman that gave birth to you, um, it rocks your world. It does, it does nothing but rock your world if you, are, if you are honest enough with yourself. You know, the woman that I'm supposed to be looking after. Obviously, if and when I get married, inshallah, I'll have my wife. And if and when I have... Um, a, a daughter as well, inshallah. These will be the, the ladies that I'll be looking after, yeah? The women that I'll be looking after. But until now, I have my mother and I've got my sisters, okay? And my mother, of course, should be the first woman that I should be trying to look after. Now, all of a sudden, my mother's looking after me like I'm a baby. You know, she's there. Um, I'm on a hospital bed. I'm opening my eyes and I'm seeing my mother on her knees on the hospital floor, massaging my feet, saying that, it, you know, this is reflexology and it will help me with my lungs and my stomach and this and that. And, that is very humbling, you know, to have your own mother who gave birth to you do that. So it put me in a different state of heart, you know, a different state of my heart was becoming, uh, was open, that door that had been shut for many years possibly was now open and I was taking a lot in. And of course, on top of that, you know, I was high on morphine and tramadol and ketamine and horse tranquilizers and all sorts of stuff. And I was very emotional. Um, uh, due to these uh, physical changes on my body, I thought, nah, do you know what? I'm never gonna get married now. I'm never, I'm, you know, I have to leave, I have to leave the cage, I have to leave the gym. And for a while, this is what I did do, you know? And it does, it does affect you. But Alhamdulillah, you know, you, you should always, and I learned this from a young age, you should always look at life as half a glass of water full, not half a glass empty. So we should always appreciate with what we do have because there are people out there that have a lot less than us. So... Yeah, yeah so, so, tie, so tie that into um, sorry, going so, to the park. So tying that into going to the park. So I've come out of hospital now. Um, I was told that I need to keep physically fit. Um, I didn't want to stay in the house. I will say, look, there was uh, one guy who would actually uh, been part of... Um, a major part of my... Uh, a major part of me mentally and emotionally preparing myself for what was yet to come. Um, this man's name, may Allah bless him, is Ayman. And um, inshallah, 
Anyone who wants information on him, uh, feel free to inbox me or message me on Facebook Messenger. You can contact me via all of these different um, ways. Um, in, uh, by the end of this video, I will give uh, my details and I'm sure Liam will be kind enough to put I'll my put information in, in the description box, yeah? Um, this guy, he got stabbed with a Rambo. Wow. He, got, he, got, he got shanked up with a Rambo. He survived and that? Went, he survived that. Um, he's from Southeast. He got shanked up with a Rambo. It went through part of his back. It went through his nerves and his internal organs. It went through his intestines and it came out just under his belly button. Um, he was pronounced dead for, I believe it was three minutes and he come back. And he now has been living with uh, what I lived with for eight months. He has been living with it for three years now. Whoa. Uh, he's younger than me, he's slightly younger than me. But when I come out of hospital, I didn't want to leave the house. As I said, I didn't want to go get married. I didn't want to go meet anyone. I, I just wanted to stay at home and just, just isolate myself from everything and everyone. I was depressed, I really was, yeah, for a while. It's, it's a mad change to happen to your body, man, it really is. And of course, as I say, look at, look at life as half a glass, full, not empty. There are a lot of people in worse situations. My mother sent me this video of uh, Eamon. You can, find the, you can find it on Digital Mimbar, which is another channel. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Yeah, of course, man. Say what you but, want, man. Everything can go, man. Everything goes. Thank man. you. So uh, you can find this video and he's talking about um, his experiences of when he got stabbed and what brought him closer to Islam as well. Um, and this guy posed as someone who's, who's very close to me now. Um, he had, we had the opportunity of uh, going towards um, uh, lectures together. We were, uh, you know, contributing to the same charity. He is a lot more active than I am in this charity. And um, even though his physical situation is worse than mine, he contributes a hell of a lot, mashallah. And I mean, he's not, he's not supposed to be picking up weight. He's not supposed to be as active as he is. He's got very bad nerve damage. May Allah cure him, yeah? Um, but nonetheless, you know, just seeing a guy that's younger than me going through the same ordeal as me and slash more, you know, I had to man up. I had to man up. Saying so he was a big inspiration. Massive inspiration. Now he's someone that I hold very close to my heart. Very close to me. He lives close to me and I hold him very close to my heart. Uh, may Allah bless him and I'll always be there. And if you're watching this, amen, you're, you're my brother and I love you. Um, anyway, so going back into it now, yeah? Um, I went to the park. I went for a couple of Sundays. Um, there's one brother who's also as well, very close to me as well now. May Allah bless him. His name is Muhammad. He, uh, he's got a channel called Pathway to Truth. Um, but he hasn't been in Speaker's Corner for quite some time now anyway. <laughs> anyway, this brother, um, he saw me on the first week that I was there. And I was giving da'wah to a Christian and um, he recorded it and he told me that he planned to put it on YouTube. I was like, I didn't really know what this YouTube way was about. I thought it was only a couple of characters that go up on YouTube. And okay. that was uh, Muhammad Hijab, Mansoor, Hamza and Hashim. I thought anyone else was just like, yeah. neither here nor there really. Yeah? So I was like, uh, I was a bit apprehensive about it at the time. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, look, let me put it up. If you think it's not beneficial, then you can ask me to take it down and you've got my word as a man, I'll remove it. I said, all right, cool. We got close, um, uh, th obviously through that, and we continue to spread the word of, uh, of, of Allah. And um, Alhamdulillah, it just set off from there, really. It yeah. just set off from there. Now, I mean, I started like last July, August, so it's nearly a year that I've been there. Um, I can say that I've learned quite a lot. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, that knowledge is the key to worship and to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. So if Muhammad peace be upon him can put down a message to say, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, and this doesn't cancel out any, uh, this isn't there not to address anyone uh, in creation, there is a lot more knowledge than as long as our lives can uh, capac uh, capacitate for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's a good place. When you're teaching, I think, uh, coming from a teaching background as well, when you're teaching, I think it's, a, it's an amazing way to learn um, when you're teaching. You know, when you're teaching, you, you're giving yourself the need, uh, the requirement to learn something in order to teach it. So, subhanAllah, when you're there as an ambassador in the corner and you're teaching from what you know and you're speaking from what you know, it only leaves you with the, uh, with the energy and the, uh, the reasoning within yourself to go back and learn more to teach more, you know? So um, I've had an amazing time. I'm really enjoying it at the corner and and there's gonna be a lot more to come. So for anyone as well that's listening as well, inshallah, Guidance Avenue is my channel. Please comment, like, and subscribe. 
Um, I do plan to expand on the channel and the activities and the, the and with the message, of course, that I'm going to uh, push through, inshallah. Um, we're going to go down different different avenues, inshallah, with the channel. Um, you can also reach me on Facebook at Muhammad Tawheed. So that's M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D space Tawheed, which is T-A-W-H-E-E-D. Um, again, I'm sure Leon will be kind enough to put all of this yeah, in the definitely. description, man. But um, yeah, fire away any more questions, yeah. bro. Yeah, can you sound like you're trying to wrap up the thing still? <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> at like all, man. I promise you, not at all, yeah. man. Not but, at um, all, bro. I'm just saying that, yeah. So, um, going from the, the mind state, like where you said, when you was fresh from the operation, you're back at home, yeah. and you felt like you just wanted to stay in. Like, I don't know what was going through your mind at that time, but how did um, Speaker's Corner, the, the experience there, how did it affect you, like, psychologically? You know, there's, there's, there's a link between your heart and your mind, you know. Anyone can tell you. There's just someone, for example, that has fallen in love before. They will always say, oh, think with your mind and not with your heart, you know, or yeah. whatever it is. You know, there's always a link between your mind and your heart. And they should always be in synchronicity with each other. Now, obviously, coming from a situation where I'm waking up now and I'm not, and I've got a bag on my stomach, and that plays with your mind. I mean, uh, I've never had a problem with uh, blood. I've never had a problem with... Uh, you know, any kind of uh, injuries with, not, I'm, I'm talking about looking at things, yeah? Um, obviously you feel pain inflicted if you ever get shanked or whatever it is, but I've never had a problem with blood and stuff. But whenever I looked at my own intestine, like when I had to, when I had to like, I don't want to go into detail in it, but when I had to address it. Sincere and you know, specific, man, good game of detail. <laughs> content over everything, yeah? Yeah. So uh, it would always make me feel very faint. I would always feel like I'm on the verge of fainting when I saw it. But I don't think it was much, uh, as much as because of it looked gory or anything like that. I think it was because of the contextualization and what was behind it that came with it. The fact that so many elements of my life had now changed, you know. Um, the, I, I do live alone now, alhamdulillah. But at the time I was living alone and I'd moved out to move back in with my parents due to my sickness, yeah. my illness, yeah. So that was one thing. I'd had to leave my work, that was another thing. I had to leave my network, that was another thing. I had to leave many, many things behind. You know, as I said, you know, being in the cage and being in the gym, I had to leave all of this behind, yeah? Um, so every time I looked at that, that was like what defeated me. That was like what defined me for who I was. So it was only when I started going out and speaking about Islam and Tawheed that I just felt that pure happiness, that pure euphoria, and it filled my mind. It filled my mind, it kept me busy. And that, of course, when I got attached to it, my heart followed, you know, but with my heart, it was always initially there anyway, because I love Allah and I love Islam. So Alhamdulillah, you know, they, they interwine with each other and they do play their part. And I believe that, you know, of course, as a human being, you are, you're mentally stronger when you're, when you're physically strong, you are mentally strong. But in order to have strength in your heart, you need to have a connection with whatever it is that you believe in. Otherwise, you wake up in the morning with no purpose. You know, I've spoken to people in the corner before, and I've, I've, you know, I don't, I don't really know the atheist argument too tough. I need to start watching uh, Hijab and Hamza's videos a bit more, and other people uh, with the likes of of of, um, of them, and uh, about how to deal with atheists, the atheist argument. Yeah, so I stay away from that. It's like treacherous waters for me at the moment. Yeah, but nonetheless, I mean, the one thing that I always say to them is, um, do you believe your life is without purpose? And They'll say, well, I'm born and I will die. And I'll say, what's the purpose of tissue paper? You know, you blow your nose with it. You wipe your backside with tissue paper. And I'll say, okay, so tissue paper has purpose and you don't. So you're telling me something, a piece of cloth that you wipe yourself with has purpose and you don't. So, I mean, it's, it's just about having purpose. And when I go to Speaker's Corner as well, I get that sense of... of, of um, of having purpose, alhamdulillah. And this whole YouTube thing as well, it's very new to me, you know, I'm just going with the flow. I've always expressed to, to the people that, that watch my videos, you know, and I've said it in videos before. Um, I've also come across to, um, on comments as well, I've always put down to, to subscribers of the channel, I say that this channel is for you. You know, this channel is for you guys that cannot come out to the park, that cannot come out and um, call people towards Tawheed, you're not in a situation to do so, whether it's because of time, health, place, money, whatever your circumstance and situation is, you know. And I take a lot of advice from people who are a lot more learned than me when they come down. But yeah, Speaker's Corner is all, is all new to me. I used to come as a young boy uh, with my dad, may Allah bless him. But I used to just uh, sit there laughing at people who used to say that they're God. Yeah. And, you know, the likes of such. 
So when you, when you used to go as, as a young boy with your dad, because obviously Speaker's Corner has changed a lot since changed back lot. in the day. Back in the day, lot, there, was, there, used, there was hardly any religious talk there, as I remember. Yeah. But now it seems like that's what it mostly is. So uh, like, what do you remember it being like when you was younger? I remember it being a jungle, man. <laughs> yeah. To be honest. I remember in, ter- it being in terms a, of the speakers, like the, the um, subjects being spoken about. Yeah, I remember it being like a jungle slash circus. And there used to be this one guy, and I remember him more vividly than I remember anyone at Speaker's Corner. He was a black man. In brackets, Sarah, don't try and dig at this shit. <laughs> cool. It's not always about the black, yeah? yeah? Anyway, look, he was a black man and he used to call himself Olumba, Olumba, Obu. And I remember this man, he, he came from a family that has a church somewhere. I can't remember if it was in Hackney or something, yeah? And he used to say that he was God. That God was in him or he was God or something like that. And um, he would call people towards worshipping him. I remember this. And there was a few of them, but I remember one guy in particular. Now, I used to stand there as people used to mock him. And as a kid, I just found it entertaining and I would laugh him with the adults and I wouldn't know why. But nonetheless, uh, the image of this man, it stuck in my head for years. And subhanAllah, you know, uh, it makes you it makes you realize how Tawheed is integrated into you. Because I used to think, how can this man be God? There's only one God. He didn't create the ground that he is stepping on. So what, what, what was his arguments for saying that? Or his oh, reasons for saying that? Oh, no. I don't know. I was a kid. I was yeah. laughing along with the people. It just stuck in your mind though. You remember him saying that? Yeah, you're hitting the nail mm. on the head, man. That's, that's all it was. And uh, I would never think that years later I'll be part of the Speaker's Corner wave. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how... I think it's quite new. To my understanding, it's quite new. This YouTube, this YouTube wave of Speaker's Corner. As for yourself as well, yeah, you're yeah, quite yeah. new to the scene as well. But um, it's all good, you know. It, I get a lot of I get a lot of um, good feedback. Of course, I get a lot of criticism as well, and that's fine. Like someone's put out a video of me that's got over, as it stands, since the date of this video's come out, about one and a half million views on, and someone's called me a radical Muslim, yeah. <laughs> something. And there's nothing radical about any any of the content and, and what I'm saying in that video. But so why do they sing, why do they single you out? Sorry. Why do they single you out in the video? Um, I'm I'm there to defend Islam. Basically, what. What, what was said in the video before I come in, they were talking about how um, uh, m- Muslim men are allowed to have four wives. Yeah. And I wanted to clear up the uh, ramifications that surround okay. this. It's not this. just as simple as having four wives. because you want just it. as simple as having four wives. And, you know, I, I clarified it in the, wi- in the video. I don't even have one wife. Okay. So, <laughs> but nonetheless, look, for a Muslim, since we're on the topic now as well, yeah, I don't want to start preaching, but what I said was this. I said, look, for a, for a Muslim man to have um, four wives, he must treat them justly and equally. Um, now, we, it's going to take too long for us to go into the, of course, the, uh, the contextualization of this, yeah? But nonetheless, um, I was challenged to the ideology then of a woman having four husbands. And I, I turned around and I said in the video, I said, well, if a woman has four husbands, who's the daddy? Yeah. You know, if the, if the woman gets pregnant, who's the dad? So. It's just a logical okay. argument. But nonetheless, I'm saying, look, that video there itself has one and a half million views. And I just find it very interesting and funny how people propagate. It's so sad, man. It's so sad how people take videos and they try to misrepresent, misrepresent you. Yeah, bro, yeah. I mean, look, you're, in, you're, fi- you're filling in the gaps in my sentences, bro. That's exactly <laughs> what it is, bro. People, you know, they, they do propagate and, you know, they, they, they want to make you look as if you're misrepresenting. On, so, the, on the subject, sorry yeah. to cut you, on the subject no, of um, mis- being misrepresented, um, in regards to all of these attacks that's been happening recently that people are claiming so-called Muslims are doing, like the um, London stuff, um, what's, what's your take on that? I'm glad you brought that up, Leon. Um, bro, it may very well be... So, so, so just to add on, um, yeah. that was a question by... Some of the commenters in, a, in, in, in on, on the um, on the on the page still I can't right. remember their names though, man. All they're right. gonna be bugged at well, me. Still anyway, they're gonna have the recognition for it. Yeah, so yeah, hats yeah. off to whoever's put down these comments. Thank you for your comment, and I'll try and address it to the best of my abilities. Yeah, um, they may very well have been um, attacks from Muslims. They could have been, but nah, I don't think they are. Uh, they're, they're certainly, I mean, what I will say, just to clear it up here, they certainly are not Islamically driven actions. There's no place in Islam for terror. There's no place in Islam for the killing of innocent people. 
you know, just the, just the ruling of, um, of war, just the ruling of when you go to war. These are some of the rules that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, um, ordered the soldiers to uh, how to conduct themselves. He said, and these are some of the orders he said. He said, don't cut down trees, don't harm the elderly, don't harm women, don't harm children, don't, um, don't uh, uh, destroy the chapels or the temples, etc. Treat the prisoners uh, with, with respect. You must feed them, clothe them and shelter them. You know this whole thing of feeding, clothing and sheltering, that he's saying how to treat the prisoners. This is how we are ordered by Allah, through Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to treat our wives. So in essence, we are asked, we are ordered as Muslims that if we do enter a war, yeah, to treat the prisoners with the same respect that you treat your wives in that sense, feed, clothe and shelter. So there's a lot of mercy that is promoted in Islam. Now when these attacks happen, it's propagated. Now look, um, for people that do decide to add me on Facebook, they'll see a video that was documented and recorded by myself um, from, uh, what's the date today? So it is the 17th of June, yeah? So on the 16th of June, if you, if you scroll down on my Facebook page, uh, you will see a video of, of myself and some Muslims and just other members of the community, not necessarily Muslims, helping out with uh, obviously the, um, the post, um, the post, the, the post damage of the fire that took, that, took past, uh, that took place not even a mile away from me, from where I live okay. in a bush. And this is a place called Latimer, Latimer Road, which is not far from me at all, stones throw away, man, literally. You know, I can drive there within two minutes of where I am. Yeah. And um, the masjids, the, the local mosques, had gathered together, open 24 hours for anyone, doesn't matter Muslim, non-Muslim, black, Chinese, yellow, whatever you are, okay, um, and gave them a home, gave them shelter, gave them love, fed them, clothed them, sheltered them. And it's not, only, it's not only the Muslims, but the whole community that were there to be part of that image. Yeah, but did the news go to document that? No, they did not, okay? I believe that there is a war against Islam, okay? I don't like to get into the political swing of things. I just come to talk to bring people towards Tawheed. I don't want to become a political figure. Okay. Yeah. And, but I will say, just in context to, to, to this question that you've asked me, um, I believe that there's a lot of propagation against Islam. And, you can, and as I said from before, you can never judge a religion by the followers. You can only judge a religion by the teachings. You can judge the followers by the followers. But you can't judge a religion by the followers. You can only judge a religion by the teachings because what substantially keeps that religion consistent is the textual evidence or the text, whatever the text is, yeah? Um, because that, that is what keeps it, and that is the text. That's it. So, um, I believe that these acts are atrocious. I don't believe that it is ever justifiable to kill innocent people. Um, I'm part of, of London's community. I'm born and raised in London. Um, I always try to stay on the right-hand side of, um, of morals, should I say and principles and good principles you know I, I believe i was raised well by my parents and you know if and when one day i have a big family i will want to um i will want that to to be reflected upon my children if allah so wills so i do, do yeah go on do, do you feel like um you need to condemn actions like this when it's taken out by people who claim to be muslim so you know the same way for example you got like the um you got like the stereotype, like someone could come up to me and say, ah, oh, so tell, tell me what's going on with the oil prices uh, in the Gulf? Could you sum it up for me? Okay. Why? Because you're Arab. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of uh, stereotype. Um, of course, look, but I do believe this. I believe that people are not arrogant and they're not as stupid as they come across to be. I believe people do play stupid and they do contribute to that whole propaganda um, that is anti-Islamic propaganda, yeah? And um, I believe that people are wise enough to know that sometimes things are not always what they appear to be and there is a there is a massive war against islam right now there is i've grown up in this country i can see it very clearly so people will use this and they will come and we will have to defend islam if someone asks me a question about islam i'll have to defend it with knowledge of course and with good etiquette i have to defend it do you think so, do you think it's right though that you've feel the need because just like um as a black man 
when like there's um, the knife crime or black on black violence or something like that, when something like that gets mentioned, I sometimes feel like I get prejudged by people who don't know me personally as I, I, so, I, I'm, I'm part of that problem there. Yeah. Even though I know I'm not involved in nothing like that. But I feel like I'm being prejudged and I do kind of feel the need to say that ain't me. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's right that I have to say that because I know that ain't me. Yeah. You shouldn't be prejudged. I'm yeah. looking at like you shouldn't be prejudging me and thinking I'm that way. You know what, bro? What I will say to that is every shepherd has sheep and sheep give the need to have a shepherd in place. Now, if people want to be sheep and you are smarter, you choose whether you want to be a sheep or a shepherd. So I would, I would say it's a commendable act, even though you don't like it, I would say it's a commendable act, the fact that you are going to uh, have to defend yourself time and time again. Mm. That's just the world we live in, my brother. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Arab Muslim man with a beard. You're a black man growing up in, in, in a ghetto in London. There are some people like, may Allah bless him, Hussein, who is both a black man and a Muslim growing up in a ghetto. That's double trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so imagine how much more a man like Hussein, may Allah bless him, has to be defending mm. himself and the religion. And, and look, look how he comes across. He's an exemplary yeah. figure. He goes and tries to create peace with, uh, with Gabriel um, in Speaker's Corner over the issue. Yeah. Um, I hope people, when they see this video as well, they don't just see, it, see me or look at me as some type of aggressor. Yeah. Um, although, you know, I've put these options out. Um, to, uh, to the gentleman that I did, but I believe that it's because of, uh, it's just basically every action has a reaction okay. and it's, it's gone that way. And I'm not here representing myself, I'm here representing Islam. I, um, let's talk about Shahada now, giving Shahada. Um, right. The dark Hussein as well still, cause I've noticed a lot of people that get Shahada it seems to me, I don't know much about Islam myself, but it seems to me like they don't know much about it neither. Like when I question them, some of my friends even, when I question them, like, um, why did you become a Muslim? Or what does being a Muslim entail? What do you have to do? Cause I don't see their lifestyle change from before they was a Muslim to now claiming yeah. to be a Muslim. So I look at it like, a, I'll, I'll say, you should call yourself an aspiring Muslim, innit? Because it's, it's kind of a, a disrespect to someone who is an actual practicing Muslim, like, who does everything what is supposed to be for you to say that you're the same as this person. Yeah. No, do you know what, bro? Your question is very interesting and I, I'm going to enjoy addressing it now. Um, I'm going to relate back to a video. I'm going to relate back to a video um, that I'd made um, a couple of weeks before this. And you can see it on my channel on Guidance Avenue. I think the video, I believe it's called Shia Stops Shahada, or at least the thumbnail. Oh, yeah, I see that still. I, I see, see that, that video, with, yeah. um, with the boyfriend stops his girlfriend or something. It's a mockery, isn't it? Yeah, I see that. So on that video, you would have seen um, a girl about to take her Shahada and her boyfriend uh, forces her not to. And then off the camera, they walk off together and she hasn't taken her Shahada. Now, for me, it's still a success story. And I'll tell you why. With or without the video, it's still a success story because my duty first and foremost as a Muslim is to convey the message of truth. Muhammad peace be upon him said that there's no compulsion in religion. La ikraf din No compulsion in religion whatsoever. No one can put a gun to your head and make you feel something. The best, the top heart surgeon or brain surgeon in the world cannot program you to believe in a God if you don't believe that God exists. They cannot program you to believe in a prophet and follow a prophet or a God's word or a book if, uh, if you don't want it. This is something between you and God. And no one has control in this and there's no connection uh, with anyone else in this world except between you and God. There's no compulsion in religion, yeah? Now, the reason why I say that this is a, um, this is a success story is because my duty was to pass the message on of truth. She was about to accept Islam, regardless of whether she accepts it there and then on the spot. Maybe the seed of faith has come into our heart already. Now to, to further in depth answer your question, to address your question, um, Leon, yeah? There may be many people that they accept Islam on terms of, for example, there's a lot, a lot of men in pen, for example, in prison. Um, they, they may accept Islam just to be part of, part of that group. You know, they don't want to be, they don't want to be victimized. They don't want to be part of the minority. If it's a Muslim, a heavily Muslim populated prison, for example, or Muslims may get certain benefits in, in, in these kind of prisons, for example. I don't know. Yeah. But what I would say is even, even if these individuals, they come and accept into a religion based upon, for example, um, 
personal gain, uh, hidden personal gains, you know, and insincere hidden personal gains. So like, like as such of what I was talking about. Cool. So they come into the religion. At the end of the day, it's between them and Allah. Now, they may even misrepresent Islam, yeah? But people, first and foremost, need to understand that you don't judge a religion by the followers, you judge a religion by the teachings. But nevertheless, even if that's not established amongst the consensus of the people, yeah? So this individual themselves now, say for example, they accepted Islam because they thought, oh, I want to get in with the Muslims in Penn, um, because I don't want to be a victim in here. And then when I get out, I'm going to bring out my true beliefs. I may be a, a Christian missionary, for example, yeah. or I just don't believe in God at all. Just them accepting Islam by their tongue, maybe it's not in their heart. That's now, what I want to ask as well. Sorry, but so like, so do, who's the people given shahadas to people that may seem like they ain't even sincere in the first place? Ain't it the person's job giving us a shahada to make sure, obviously you can't fully know, but to at least believe within yourself that they are genuine so, in wanting to be a Muslim? Um, there are six um, pillars of faith, six fundamental articles of faith that one must believe in in order to be a Muslim, and that is the belief in the oneness of Allah, the angels, the prophets and messengers, the scriptures. Uh, obviously, you know, believing that all of the scriptures have been altered except for the Quran, which is the one protected book. Um, and then the day of, uh, day of reckoning, including heaven and hellfire. And then last but not least, Qadr or predestiny. Now, if someone disbelieves in any of these, um, they are not a Muslim. So what you'll see in my videos, I always stress to people that you must believe in these in order to be a Muslim. But nonetheless, Leon, what I will say is this, even if someone doesn't understand um, a faith, but they accept it, it opens doors for them. It's like saying, for example, um, okay, it's like saying, you want to join, uh, you, wanna, uh, you want it to appear as if you are a member of a gym. Yeah, you want to you wanna appear as if you're a cage fighter, for example. So you go hit up shoot fighters. You open up a 90 pounds membership with shoot fighters gym, for example. Yeah, you're paying 90, pound, 90 pounds a month for a membership. And with that, you can have a couple of classes a week and you can make use of the gym uh, as much as you want, etc., etc. Yeah. But you only did it for the show. But nonetheless, you still have a membership. One day you may very well think, do you know what? Let me step foot inside that gym. And when you go inside that gym, it opens your heart to the gym itself, okay. to the fight, to the sweat that you can lose, to the blood that you're going to lose, or whatever it is that you're going to gain, whether it's muscle, friendship, um, whatever it is, basically. So what I'm saying is, even if someone takes their shahada in an insincere way, first and foremost, no one knows except Allah. Okay. No one knows except Allah if they're sincere or not. And secondly, sincerity may come across later on down the line. So it basically also. So, so, so basically, even if you believe that they're doing it for unjust reasons, yeah. just the fact that they're doing it is welcoming to you. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, cool, man. I understand that still. I can hear that still. I can hear that. Um, someone asks um, P Man 182, he says, Will Muslims ever meet their maker? Um, is heaven a creation of Allah? And when in, par when in paradise, will you still be separate from Allah? Okay, so I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before, but I'll mention it again, inshallah, from what I know. Um, of course, I'm, I'm not someone that has uh, ultimate, unlimited uh, knowledge, but I will speak from my knowledge, inshallah, and I will bite my tongue in times of uh, ignorance, yeah? yeah. So, there are some Muslims on the, day of, on the day of reckoning that will get a chance to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will look at these individuals and He will ask them, what else do you want? What do you want? What else do you want? And Allah will turn, and these people will turn back to Allah after they've been promised, promised paradise for eternity. And they will say to Allah, um, what else can you give us? Basically, you've given us the, the, the main ultimate goal that our, in our lives we were striving for. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his veil off whatever it is that is covering him from the people. And if it wasn't for the will and permission of Allah, these people would be scorched from the light of Allah. But Allah shades these people on that day. And Allah will turn to these people in Jannah, in paradise. And he will say, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, Assalamu alaikum. O oh, people of paradise, peace be with you. So in terms of the, for example, if you're going to go down the metaphysical aspects, for example, of um, how people can physically live near their Lord, 
I'm not the best person to ask about that. Okay. But what I will say is that you know I do know of these uh, these narrations regarding um, regarding accounts of people being close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in paradise. So that's 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 what I could say on that matter. And yeah. Okay. What's um. What we're gonna we're gonna try to wrap it up now still. Right. Even though we're gonna reflect on this interview <laughs> and come back for our part two. Definitely gonna have to do a part right. two. So how many videos is this getting cut into now? I don't I'm gonna try um cert, like um cut them into subjects in it. As that's the subject it. changes I'll make a cut. Oh, that's that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. That's that's what I'm gonna try to do. Yeah, I'm a subscriber as well, you know. So yeah, I'm, say that I'll say that I appreciate it. Appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, so um basically now at the end I'd like to give you an opportunity to just express anything that you want the audience to know, maybe about you, maybe just like messages for the audience, maybe like is anything what's on your mind man, what you want what you want to get out there? Um I would say this look, um of course we can't put religion aside because it is what we believe defines us before anything else because that is our final destination is either gonna be as a Muslim I believe in heaven or in hell, yeah? But nonetheless put in religion aside for a second because obviously we're just talking speakers corner here so let's put religion aside for a second we're all members of a community now it's sad a lot is going on at the time that this video has been taken it's just a few days after the uh, atrocious um, tragic um, events that took took uh, took place in Grenfell Tower uh, in Latimer not far from Labrick Grove as what the news likes to call North Kensington yeah they try and posh it up a bit but in Labrick Grove and it's uh, Latimer Road sorry and it's not far from where I've been brought up in Shepherd's Bush now a lot of members of the community have been coming together and um, doing whatever they can to give these give these families, uh, you know, uh, a better chance of survival, you know, a bit more happiness and a bit less sadness, you know. A lot, a lot of Muslims were affected in this, but nevertheless, a lot of your brothers and sisters in humanity, all humans, have been affected in these in these incidents. Now it was amazing to see. I'll tell you one thing, yeah. And it, uh, I wish I had it recorded, but my hands were full, evidently, yeah? So we were moving stuff from one, from one, from one uh, center to another. So it was coming out of a van now that we loaded up, a truck, sorry. And now we're taking stuff into another building. And then these, are gonna, these boxes are gonna get distributed amongst the community and amongst the families. So whether it be toys or san sanitary uh, towels, you know, women's hygiene stuff, or books or clothes or shoes, etc., food. Um, and basically we made a chain. So we're picking up a box and then we're passing it on. I'm picking up a box, I'm passing it on. And there was a human chain of people contributing. And I mean, there were black hands passing me a parcel. And I was passing that parcel on to brown hands. And that was getting passed on to yellow hands, to white hands. And it was just beautiful and amazing to see the community come together. Now what I ask for is this, look, um, let's be civil to one another. And let's always remember that when you give off a comment, some people, they take comments to heart more than others. I don't really, but um, a lot of people do. So let's make sure, and I'll, I'll go and say something that my father said to me when I was young. He said, Muhammad, you've got a set of teeth and you've got your tongue inside. And these teeth serve, serve as prison bars for the prisoner, which is your tongue. Sometimes that prisoner comes out of prison but you need to behave because he's going to go back in, isn't he? He's only out for a few hours or on bail or whatever it is. So be careful what that prisoner does when he is out of his cage. Um, so let's all be, let's all contribute to the fact that we are part of this community of London, yeah? We are part of London. We have a lot of people passing through. There is a lot of underlying situations. Now people can verily use and propagate situations here. Look, I don't dislike any human being because of where they're from. I have no problem. I have many friends who are black. I'm from Bush. I have a lot of friends who are black. You understand? I grew up around a lot of black people. Yeah? But nonetheless, look, I don't like certain religious ideologies. I don't like certain underlying sly strategies, like some of which we spoke about earlier today. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that racism, there's no place for racism in our religion. The first man who made the Adhan, the first man in fact of the Muslims who stood on the Kaaba, on the house of Allah and made the Adhan, called to prayer, was a black man. 
He was a black slave who was released by instruction from our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He further then went on to be one of the most respected figures in that community and someone who was very close to Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. This was our beloved Prophet Muhammad and what he taught us ar around racism, all right? Um, there are a lot of issues. Now let's stand together as a community and remember this. Let's put all of these, you know, and there are a lot of people and you know yourselves, a lot of people in the YouTube section, you know, you love spurring out a lot of racist comments. You love spurring out a lot of anti-Islamic and a lot of anti-religious, a lot of anti-everything comments, you know, all of you trolls out there, yeah? Just, just like remember that you came into this world out of the mercy of something. And even if you don't believe in God and you don't believe in mercy, just remember that your mothers went through a lot of pain in order for you to be born. Your mothers went through a lot of pain in order for you to be born. Okay, so you came. The fact that you can sit there and be comfortable, the fact that you are happy with your life and with your existence and you're living well and healthy, even if you don't believe in a God, it started all out of the pain of your mother, the woman who gave birth to you. She could have decided to have a, uh, an abortion, but she chose not to, for example. Okay, all I'm trying to say is this, look, our life, we go through many choices. Let's choose to be humble with the people. Let's choose to be loving. And if we do believe a certain religion or a certain creed, people will most likely listen to you a lot better and a lot more effectively and efficiently if you come across with good manners. Come across with good manners. Um, I'm going to continue doing, and this is what I've said before, I'm going to continue, hopefully, by the will and, and mercy and grace of Almighty God, um, continue doing the work that I do in Speaker's Corner, and I'm going to be adding to it as well, inshallah. I can only say thank you to, the, to, the, to, to Leon here and his team at Content Over Everything for giving me this opportunity to speak with you guys and connect with you on a, on a different kind of level, a different kind of tip away from the corner. And, you know, who knows what the future holds, but let's, I just want to leave on that note of, you know, that human chain that I was speaking about that I was a part of the other day. I never felt more important than um, when I was part of that. And this is what our religion teaches, to be tolerant. So let's be more tolerant with people. And that's the kind of message that I would like to come across with. So anyway, from us here at Content Over Everything, yeah. and from us here at Muhammad, from me, Muhammad, from Guidance Avenue, comment, like, and subscribe, all right? Hopefully there's gonna be a lot more footage from Leon and his team at Content Over Everything. Stay tuned, and stay tuned into my channel as well. Please remember us in your prayers. And let's just promote some love and harmony amongst ourselves, yeah? So to everyone, to all the Muslims out there, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But nonetheless, to all my human, uh, all my brothers and sisters in humanity, peace. Peace. Man like brother Usain. I mean, <laughs> man like brother Muhammad. Well, go on, man. What, yeah, is like, it because I've got a beard, yeah? I can't even say, is it because I'm black? Is it because I've got a beard? Because you got a beard. <laughs>